The first card out of the spread here indicates uh, your energy that you're bringing to the table. We have here the Ace of Swords in the reverse position. So I feel for a lot of you students, writers, people doing any type of um, writing projects, you know, like essays, even like um, uh, writing a proposal, a business proposal, writing a, uh, a book, even uh, in any publishing industry. Um, what I feel here is, is a little bit of a creative block, okay? So this is uh, indicative of like communication issues going awry, even um, not having the inspiration to to write hitting a creative block or even you know a writer's block when this card shows up in the reverse as your energy it basically means a situation where you feel almost as if you're uh, going against the tides you're going against opposition you're not able to you know direct your life in a in a p direction where it feels like it's in alignment with your emotional needs with your goals with your aspirations so I sense like this is going to be a little bit of a problematic month. Um, what I'm also feeling with this card here is this is a card about truth, clarity, and being able to find answers. When it shows up in the reverse position, it basically means some things are hidden from you. But they're saying like, you know, you have the intuitive knowledge um, in order to sniff out the truth, in order to like um, reason it out is what they're saying. But I feel that you're looking for concrete evidence, okay? So you're applying logic and rationality in a situation where it actually might require intuition. Um, so I do feel like because you're a water sign and with this energy as the Ace of Swords, it's a little bit uh, in opposition to your innate element and it's a little bit of a challenge trying to grapple with this. When it shows up in the reverse as well, I almost feel like you're, um, you might be put in a position where you don't know how to defend yourself, you know, either with words or with actions. You don't know how to get your point across. You feel like communication is kind of like at a stalemate. You feel like no matter what you do, you can't really rectify a situation. And that's specifically for those of you who are trying to mediate or are trying to, you know, um, offer a, um, like a, brokering a peace treaty or even like offering, you know, like a, a peace offer, making a peace offer to somebody. So let's move on into your second house here. The second house deals with money and values. And first of all, we have here the hangman. And this is showing up in the reverse position. In your money house, I feel like some of you are going to have to make some sacrifices about, you know, where your money is going, um, what I guess like vital and essential items you need to purchase versus, you know, cutting back on things that are non-essential, like uh, doing a little bit more budgeting, doing a little bit more like um, calculation about how much is co coming in, how much is leaving. So in terms of your financial situation, I do feel a little bit of like, you know, making sacrifices for things that you want, but you might not absolutely need, okay? And uh, when it shows up in the reverse, I do feel the hangman as well indicates an overcoming of something. So I feel some of you are kind of like on the tail end of having to make these concessions. And then for others of you, I feel like, you know, finances are going to start to blossom for you for this month where you're not going to have to make these sacrifices anymore. So it's kind of like coming out of a place of sacrifice. So I, I feel that it actually looks um, pretty good. And it's kind of like a reversal, a change in fortune for, for better or for worse. But I do feel with this card, it's indicative of a situation where we're not waiting in suspense anymore. And um, what I'm also feeling is I feel very strongly. Some of you have recently, you know, like you might have been applying for work, met with some disappointment or lack of, um, you know, callback. And then this is the month in which, you know, new work will be made available for you. It might be a little bit outside of your geographical location. So you're trying to decide whether or not to go with it, whether or not to, you know, take up that, that job offer. And then others are like in a uh, work situation that might be a little bit, I want to say, it might pay you, you know, be below your expectation and you're landing a new job and you're trying to figure out, you know, how to make things work, like which one to go with and if it's at a geographical distance from you, then you might have to decide, you know, make these difficult decisions about 
um, whether or not it's a good idea to stay or to, you know, venture out into with the new job. Third house communications, we have here the Knight of Cups in the reverse position. And the Knight of Cups in the reverse, um, when it comes to communication, once again, this is almost like, you know, um, brokering peace treaties. So somebody, I feel like somebody's playing mediator, either between family members or between like work colleagues or in a work environment. When it shows up in the reverse position, it's basically like um, communicating for more of a um, emotional standpoint. And it's also like allying with people because you have an emotional connection with them rather than you truly believing in the things that they're doing, in the things that they're espousing. So I feel like you're just going along for the ride. And I want you to be very, very careful about this because I feel like with so many, you know, um, communications cards overall in the reverse, I feel almost as if you're afraid of, you know, going against the tide. You're afraid of um, kicking up a, a fuss and you're afraid of upsetting people. So you might do something that is not so much in alignment with your values or the things that you truly emotionally deeply believe in. So there's something here about, you know, uh, living in your truth and don't uh, let other people, you know, their disapproval and things like that affect you. Um, which brings us to the next card. This is the Hierophant. And with the Hierophant so close to the Knight of Cups, I feel like, you know, it's a whole issue about what do I believe in versus what other people believe in. Am I bandwagoning with everybody else or am I supposed to, you know, seek my own knowledge, my own truth and do what I believe is, you know, the, the harder choice but it's something that I truly believe in. So I do see some inner conflict for some of you as it pertains to, you know, February, and it pertains strongly to where your values lie, what you believe in versus what people around you believe in. So we don't always have to agree with people. We can agree to disagree, but whether or not we should stand up for our truths, that's actually very, very important. And, you know, if, if we don't defend what we feel is the right thing, gradually, it basically means that, you know, we start to uh, lose ourselves, our sense of self, our sense of like uh, moral compass, moral integrity as well. It gets corroded slowly. And then we start to lose our sense of self as a water sign. It's really important for you to um, figure out where you stand, because I feel that, you know, um, first of all, it, it's water is very transient. You know, if you pour water in uh, whatever container, it takes the shape of that container. So I do sense that um, having a, a little bit more of a fixed, rigid way of thinking, as well as defending what you believe is right, that's going to be vital for this month, okay? What you yourself believe is right, regardless of the opposition. I feel like standing up for your truth, that's a, a big theme coming through for, you know, the February. So let me talk about this card here, the Hierophant. And the Hierophant basically indicates tradition, order. It's in your fourth house. And the fourth house indicates family, you know, uh, mother figures as well. And I'm going to go talk about the mother figure in a little bit. Um, first of all, in your family environment, I feel like it's, it's tremendously organized. You know, it's... Um, it's kind of like a, a home, like a family where there's like different, you know, generations living under one roof. It's a house with, you know, two parents and, you know, the, the, the standard model of a home, two parents, two kids, you know, a dog. Like it, it seems to me like it's very, very stable. It's also very traditional. And it seems to me like there is an element of conservatism associated with the, the household environment. And the mother, you know, for some of you, the mother might have been like, um, somebody who runs the household, you know, who's like a very, very good manager, who's uh, who knows how to delegate, who who can keep the household very, very clean, spotless. Everything has a place. And, you know, there is a respectful order and hierarchy. And, um, you know, younger people don't talk back to their elders. So I feel like it's a very traditional old school type of a home. There's nothing wrong with that. When it shows up in the upright position, it basically means order and stability. You know, you don't have um, you don't have chaos in the house. Everything has a place. But when it's taken to the extreme, it can basically mean, you know, um, clinging on to holding on to values that might not be appropriate for you outside of this household context. 
And so I feel overall, when it comes to your upbringing, when it comes to the things that you're doing, they're really urging you to, you know, re-examine these things and see if they're still appropriate for you in this day and age, especially for you as it pertains to the um, life experience and the circumstances that you are dealing with for this month. So they're telling you something that you've hold, held on to for a really long time. It's, um, it's being opposed. It's being challenged ex from the external environment. And I feel like you might be defending it and not realizing that, you know what, it's actually not appropriate for me. And or you might just um, go along with 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 things that have been put in place without questioning it. Maybe it's not the best, you know, work procedure to f pursue, but it has been around for years. So everyone does it. But is that really the most efficient? Is that really the best way to do it? So these things are coming through uh, in many, many, the, the theme is being repeated in many cards, okay? So they want you to do a little bit more digging to figure out if it's still applicable for you. It might work for everybody else, but is that still applicable for you, all right? Um, the fifth house here deals with fun, recreation, creativity. And um, when I look at this card, the, the way that it's uh, used in this spread, especially it pertains to, you know, the people that you're going out with, the people that you are having fun with and how you express yourself creatively and how you introduce fun into your life. OK, so with the five of pentacles in the reverse, once again, I'm going to say this. I feel so your 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 creative house. And also your um, friendship house are both fives. Both of these things indicate it's almost like re-examining our friendships, re-examining our social circle, re-examining how we entertain ourselves, how we find enjoyment with other people and whether or not the people are still in alignment with our values, with the things that we want, with the things that we care about and the things that we want to preserve and protect and, and value. So. I feel like on the uh, financial front, some of you are might have been in a relationship, right, where you might have been um, isolated from your friends with this five of pentacles. So I feel like in the past you might have been in a relationship where it, it was very restrictive and um, you you and the person had a, a you know, a close knit relationship. And I feel that in the process, your friendships started to drift, you know, your, your friendships were not cultivated. Their friendships, likewise, were not cultivated. And so your friends started drifting away from you. You started cocooning yourself in, in possibly a bad relationship. And I feel that because of it, you are starting to realize that they're drifting away. So you're trying to do some damage control. You're trying to reconnect with the friends. And you're no longer cocooning yourself. You're reaching out and you're, you know, realizing as well that this is a situation that, you know, uh, it, it wasn't maintained. The friendships were not maintained. And as a result, the friendships started drifting away. You started to lose touch with people. And now you're coming out of that. OK, so you're extending outwards. You're being reached out for. And I feel that this space where you're feeling a little bit more isolated, it's coming to an end, okay? So I feel like an end to isolation. It's like connecting with people again, but you need to examine whether or not these people are still appropriate or whether or not, you know, they're still in alignment with your life path, whether or not you still, you you have are still growing together or growing apart. Um, otherwise, in terms of recreation and fun, I feel like a lot of you have something like a, income generating activity that you're doing uh, as it relate to a creative talent of yours. This can be singing, dancing, writing. Um, and I feel that, you know, you're you're hoping to do like a, uh, to have a side gig, to have like multiple sources of income based on these creative. Um, they're they're saying like some some very, very strong traits that might have been passed down, you know, through the, the family, which is, you know, um, a, an example of that would be if your mother was a, um, a very good artist, you might have inherited something from her. Likewise, from your father, if your father had a very, you know, was a very good musician, you might have inherited some skills. And I feel like it's coming through from the maternal side of the family. So I feel that you are either thinking about 
making it into a uh, income generating project, you know, singing on the side or even drawing on the side, uh, doing photography on the side and then see where it goes and see if you're going to be able to generate money from that or even use it as a hobby, as a launching pad for, you know, a, a further down the line to pursue a career in it. And I feel like it's going to work out wonderfully for many of you. Um, I keep seeing people working with their hands. So that indicates to me, you know, drawing, ceramic, sculpture, um, metalsmith, even, you know, like uh, working in some capacity. And I see like jewelry making. I do see jewelry making, making dolls. And I feel like porcelain, you know, a doll would like a porcelain painting porcelain dolls. So there's some creative skills here that needs to be cultivated because it can create, you know, a, a, a new revenue stream, a new income stream for you. And I feel like it's actually going to be very good for you. Um, you know, maybe you do like tarot readings as well. So I, I do feel this is going to be very, very good. Okay. They're saying that it's going to take some time for this thing to take off. It's going to take some time. It's going to be a little bit slow. Don't um, work. They're, they're saying work very, very diligently at it. Uh, don't cut corners. If you are encountering, you know, lack of financing, such as if you're trying to start something and you're not um, able to connect with the right financiers or you're not, it, it, there is like some stall energy associated with it. I feel that it's going to lift for you. May looks very good. May looks very good. And so I feel that whatever, you know, blockages that you're encountering with this creative project specifically, um, things will lift for you. And as well, these blockages are coming in place because I feel like certain things have to be done in a very, very systematic manner. It's almost as if you can't cut corners, you can't hasten it anymore because certain elements have to be in place first before this thing will take off. Okay. So I do see this is a very, very strong card here that indicates some type of, um, innate talent that can be made into a new income generating you know revenue stream or it's um it's a situation where you have emerged from a place of isolation and now you're reconnecting with people again which is always good and you know it's birthday time so i always like to see this card uh as people reconnecting with one another letting you know their differences um fall aside and extending out like extending an offer of friendship doing things that are in alignment with you know just humanity overall so this is a very good card um the sixth house deals with your daily routine it deals with your work and it also deals with your health we have here the knight of swords and the knight of swords as it deals with your work situation um this might be a character physically you know in your work environment that you're contending with okay so this is shown up here as an air sign an aquarius a gemini or a libra sun moon or rising this is somebody who's very intelligent. It's like they're, they're, they're very sharp, very fast, very nimble. They retain information very quickly and they're also really articulate. They express themselves with such, you know, flair, such, um, eloquence. And I feel like they don't mince words. They use a minimal amount of words in order to explain very com, like complex, convoluted concepts. And I feel like for some of you, you might be in all, you know, with this person, like you might look at them and you're like, wow, I wish my mind works like that. You know, you might be comparing yourself to them and then you might be like, I wish, you know, my mind was that agile. I wish I could be that communicative or even I wish I could be that articulate. And then for others of you, there might be some opposition coming with this person. Um, what I'm also feeling is that um, I, I'm getting the message that some of you back taxes for some of you, like, um, you know, you're, you're being sought after because of some things that were not paid, you know, overdue bills, collection, I'm, I'm sensing, or even back taxes, like if they started to audit, for example, and I, I feel that there's going to be something uncovered, okay? And they're going to ask follow-up questions. So just... Um, Keep that in mind. Um, what I'm also feeling otherwise is um, this might be somebody in your environment that you're dealing, you're having some, um, facing some opposition with. And I feel like it's a difference in opinions. And I also feel like their energy is very, very confrontational. Their energy seems, they're really spirited. And I feel like they're easily worked up. And I feel like some of you might be 
intimidated by this person. You might be in awe of them where you really look up to them, but deep down there is a sense of like admiration, but also intimidation. Um, so that's coming through. And what I'm also feeling is, you know, I, I read the cards and I look at, at the other cards that have the same uh, element. So the sword cards here basically indicates a situation where, you know, you have this person in your work environment, right? And um, you've had multiple run-ins with this person. I feel like if you have been conflict avoidant in the past, it's coming back up because it's a recurring theme, it's a recurring lesson. So if this is not dealt with, you know, you, you wanna make sure this is dealt with. This might've been a problem back last year, you know, like six months ago, five months ago, where you're dealing with somebody like this. And um, I do feel for some of you, it might just be like a coworker who's very, very competitive. And it might be somebody that you feel is uh, very abrasive 